one of our, it's not our first program at the Hadley Public Library, but it might be our second. So thank you for coming. I'm Luna, and I'm very, very excited to introduce Ben, who is a friend of mine, and the father of my children, and also a Scrabble player, who is a national champion, and a teacher in Florence, Massachusetts at the JFK Middle School, and he's also a, a, um, a chameleon expert. So we're very happy to have him here today. That's a very random set of things to do. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Yay, Ben! Thank you. So I am not going to um, uh, do much other than show you these chameleons and, and answer questions if you have them, because my guess is, you know, it's only half an hour. I have a lot of questions. Uh, if you don't, I can tell you a little bit about chameleons. But let me first show you who we have here. There's many different species of chameleons, and they all look pretty different, though they have the same basic body. So this is Pants. My son named him Pants because he's a panther chameleon, and he's pretty gorgeous. Let's see if he'll hang. Hang on to me more than he's extremely friendly and gentle, and I raised him since he was a real little baby, so he's very comfortable with me and used to me. And he's gonna. Did you notice that little lip thing? Yeah. It usually people think that means he's like thirsty or he's looking for water, but I think it tends to be more of a you know checking your surroundings, seeing if he recognizes this this weird space he's in, and they do that sometimes with the tongue. There, he just did it again. This is a male panther chameleon. The males and the females are extremely different looking. The female is over here. I'll bring her out. She's a lot smaller. I mean, she's a little bit younger, but not much. But you can tell she's a lot smaller in completely different colors. These colors are kind of dramatic, and the reason for that is she saw him earlier they, they don't um, live together, not like closely. And part of that's because he would often be interested in mating with her and it's not something she wants to do a lot. So if she sees him and she thinks that might happen and she's not, it's not something she's ready for, she'll tend to turn really dark and her colors will be really bright. So for her, this is, these are pretty bright colors, it's pink. Normally she's just an all over like sort of peachy, peachy pink. Oh, she's doing the looking thing too. How old are they? They are, they're roughly a year and a half old. How long do they live though, typically? Uh, different chameleons have different lifespans. I think these in the wild live, I think, they could live anywhere between like say three and seven years. They tend to live a little bit longer in captivity because things are a little easier for them. So this species is like other species you might think of like peacocks, right? Where that gorgeous feather looking peacock is the male and the females are actually very, very plain. There's a lot of species where that's the case and chameleons are definitely one species of them, but first, I'd rather be in a tree. Then where are they from? I mean, what country? So these panther chameleons are from Madagascar, which is a big island off of Africa. And Madagascar has more unique species of chameleons than anywhere else in the world. But, but there are chameleons, different kinds of chameleons in other places. There are chameleons in, in Spain, for example. In Yemen, there's a chameleon. If you go to a pet shop and you see what's called a veiled chameleon, those come from places like Yemen. Uh, they're very different looking. There's a book here. You don't tend to see panther chameleons as much in pet stores, but you typically will see veiled chameleons. And they have this very large, I don't know if you see this picture, sort of like a helmet looking thing. And that's a very different head structure than these guys. <laughs> this is 
called How Do Chameleons Change Color? The really interesting thing is why they change color. That's one of the things, that's like the one thing everybody thinks they know, but it turns out it's the one thing that's not really true. Here's a, here's a veiled chameleon. This is a male, so it's very colorful and it has this large shape on its head, so it's pretty different looking. Does anybody know why chameleons do change color? So that what I understand, what I, my misunderstanding is that it's to protect themselves. They're trying to hide from predators. Camouflage. Yeah, how's he doing? He's standing right out. Like, <laughs> yeah. So maybe he's not afraid. Uh, well, that's an interesting theory. Yeah, he doesn't think he needs uh, to be camouflaged. What well, we could say? Uh, don't they change color for their feelings? Yeah, actually, that's about the most, the best way to put it. They change color for their feelings. So, uh, like for example, I said she was a little bit worried about being so close to him. She got really dark, and her colors got really bright. So their feelings can be anything from being um, angry or being relaxed, but it can also be the temperature. It can be lots of things, but it's not camouflage, even though it may uh, at times seem that way. That is not what a chameleon tries to do. So there's all those things where you've seen like pictures of a chameleon on some crazy thing, like as if they're gonna turn that color, but they don't. His colors do change. He can be very, he can be dramatically different in that in certain times, his, all the green can be totally orange. And that's a pretty different look, but the blue tends to be pretty consistent. Can chameleons change from like every single, can they, can all chameleons change to every single color? Do they only have like a specific set of colors? Yeah, that's a great question. No, no not at all. Like for example, so he is almost, every color you can think of and, there, and it's amazingly uh, throughout him. Uh, but he, so he couldn't, for example, turn, let's say a color he never has turned. He's not gonna turn brown or orange or those kind of colors. She's really never gonna be anything besides sort of the dark color and that peachy kind of color. She, she will never look like this no matter you know, how she's feeling. Can they move fast or are they just slow moving? So they're super slow. In fact, a lot of times if you see like a video of them, you might think it's in slow motion. Um, they really are not fast. They don't, they can't particularly run or anything like that. Let me see direct mode. Oh, wait a minute. So what they've developed through evolution is the ability to catch, you know, all know how they catch their food. Right, with their tongue. So he can be right here, and his food could be, let's see, realistically, his food from right here could be here, and his tongue could go that far, which seems hard to believe, but uh, they have a remarkably powerful and long tongue that they can shoot out. Um, and then also, because their eyes can see both directions, they don't have to scurry around looking for things, they, they can pretty much find what's out there. So when I first got this guy, he was about the size of like half my thumb. And he recently had children. He had children. He had children, and one of his ch children uh, is here today. <laughs> what? He? What's that? What'd you say? He, one of his children is here. He? Um, he? Wait, hold on. Let me get this little guy. <laughs> So with the babies, you don't usually know right away if they're male or female. Oh my God! <laughs> I have to make sure she doesn't. See how she's lightened up because she hadn't seen him for a while. But if he starts coming closer and she sees him, he will too dark and So with chameleons, you don't want to like just pick them up, you want them to walk onto your hand. It's a much safer way for them to move out. So I'm going to put her back here. So. This is a baby panther chameleon. And it's only been the last week that I've sort of figured out if this is male or female. What do you all think? <laughs> Show you the Female. 
hard to tell. So my guess is that this will this is a male, and the reason you don't really see it now, but it does have some greenish color coming in. So the colors take a long time to develop. Like his colors weren't anything like that for the first six months of his life. But over the next month or so, this one will develop more color. So I, I could be wrong, but I'd be surprised if it was not a male, because you see there's some, there's some bright greens in there that come out. And the How female the just wouldn't, wouldn't have that. How what? old is the baby? The baby is about 10 weeks old. And, and how, what is the paternal instinct towards the babies? Is there to eat them. He eats them. <laughs> oh. okay. I hate to say that, but um, they don't recognize the babies really even as, um, you know, their own certainly, or even as anything but possibly another food source. What's really interesting, though, about that, let me put him somewhere. So the females are incredibly nurturing for their baby with, with the babies and before they're born. After they're born, they have nothing to do with them. But what happens is she develops eggs inside, and she can lay up to maybe 60 or 80 eggs. And they're tiny little white eggs. What caveat? What's that? <laughs> Just like little round No, no, well, about the size of maybe your, your fingernail. Um, and they actually grow as the chameleon inside grows, which is interesting. So it's not like chickens, which I think stay one size. And so what she does is, after she develops these eggs, about 30 days later, she has to lay them in the ground. And she's incredibly careful about how she does it. She might take three days just to find, just to make the right hole. Because she needs to put them in the ground in a way that they'll be safe for up to nine months while they develop. This guy was in an egg for about, probably about nine or ten months. So they, they try to dig a hole, they tunnel down into through dirt, and they look to make the perfect hole, and if they don't think it's quite right, they come out and try again the next day. And it can go on for many days until they get a hole that's just right. Then, so they dig face forward to make the hole, then they turn around and they back out, and they turn around and come back into the hole that way so they can lay the eggs. And then they might, she, she will spend an entire day covering up the eggs. What she does is she just sort of takes her back feet and she keeps throwing dirt on top of where they were put in the ground. And she's really, really meticulous and careful to, to make sure those eggs are really safe. Really interesting to, to watch how careful she is about that. And even after you can't even tell there were eggs were laid, she's still you know covering them up with the dirt. But then after that, she has nothing to do with them. She wouldn't recognize them or anything like that. It seems like an amazingly long gestation period in the egg. Yeah, and it can even be longer. It could be 12 months. And you know, the eggs that this guy came out of, he came out in late August. And then another of the eggs didn't hatch until October, which is really unusual. So they don't even all hatch at the same time. How many will hatch? Will they all hatch? Uh, if they're healthy, they could all hatch, yeah. I mean, the reason they have so many, you can kind of imagine, it's kind of like frogs or, you know, how many tadpoles get, are born, because then half of them or more get eaten, you know, by the fish or the birds or whatever. So I think, in the wild, many of the babies would, would not make it for various reasons. So they lay so many. So he's being very patient. You'll see though, if, if she sees him, yeah, I think she's already turning a little darker. So that's sort of her emotional reaction to knowing he's nearby. I don't think he was very aware that she was nearby. What other questions do you have? Yeah. Can you tell a little bit about their habitat in, in your house? Like how do you Yeah, they have they have large enclosures. They have to in, in the wild they don't live near each other at all. They do not tend to like each other. They want to live very independently. So like males will never be within any any distance, you know, within sight of each other in the, in 
in the wild, they will find their own tree or whatever. Um, so, I, you know, I do have to keep them separate. Uh, the babies sort of live together when they're, when they're small, but then they, they also get their own place. So, so if they I, live so far apart from each other, what drives them together? Does she all of a sudden decide, hey, I'm in the mood, I'm going to go see if I can find someone? Or? No, he would search out a female, and then if the female was receptive, is willing to, to mate, then, then she would um, do that, and then they just go their separate ways. Um, but you know, if she um, has eggs inside her, then of course she'll be very um, resistant to having him come anywhere near her. This little one has changed color quite a bit. It's a lot lighter all of a sudden. And maybe you can see the green I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, ben? Yeah. I, was talking, I was thinking about, that you could explain about the climate. You know, how you... Yeah, so they, they, where they live tends to be pretty humid, pretty hot. So if you keep them at home, you have to have a, a space that can be pretty humid, have a lot of humidity. And they tend to want temperature around in the 80s, maybe around 80, high 70s, low 80s. Does anyone want to hold one of these commands? Yeah, you want to start? Um, let's see, I'm trying to think which one would. Do you have a preference for which one you want? Not really. Um, oh, wait, before I do that, you probably want to see them eat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I almost forgot the eating part. Luna was nice enough to bring some crickets to feast on. And actually, I'll tell you what, why don't you hold her while I get the cricket out? So, <coughs> some chameleons have really sharp um, fingernails that can hurt when they hold you, but these, these tend not to, right? You, don't, you probably don't barely feel it. So, she seems like she's about to fall. You see how she's trying to. With her, here, why don't you turn around so people can see what she's doing. With her tail, she's trying to make sure she has a good grip. They almost never fall in nature because their tail will always, their tail can very quickly wrap around. These are live crickets? These are live crickets, yeah. They, oh. Chameleons won't eat anything that's dead. It's really interesting. In fact, like, so if a, chameleon, if a cricket wasn't moving, even if it was alive, they wouldn't eat it. They want to make sure that what they eat is, is, is living, and that's just, you know, for their own safety. They don't really want to eat dead things. How did you get interested in chameleons? I got really interested when I was a kid. It's probably about like these guys' age, but then it was much, much later when I actually was able to have one. People understand chameleons a lot better than they did maybe 30 years ago, where it was really people had a hard time keeping them healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's come. People have come to understand a lot better about what their needs are. Um, these guys have all been very, very healthy. How much do they sleep? How much do they sleep? You know, that's a great question. Not only do they sleep like, they, they really sleep just like humans. And they're very specific. Like at seven o'clock, even if I forget to turn the lights off, they will go to sleep. And 12 hours later or whatever it is, they'll wake up. You know, they sleep through the night. The other way you could tell that they're not really changing color for camouflage is because if you see them sleeping, guess what color they become? Red. What's that? Red. Well, actually, maybe that was a trick question. They actually like, like lose all their color. They become, not all of it, but they become very, very light. So if you were in a dark forest and these guys were sleeping, they would be so easy to spot because they would be, they would just stand out as being very light colored. So it's, a, it's not a good strategy for not being seen. Um, so you can sort of, that camouflage is not really there. But they probably have predators. So What's that? they probably have predators, they're birds or snakes or other creatures that want to eat them. Right. So how do they cope with that? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I'm guessing that where they are, the predators are probably also asleep. You know, because if, it, yeah, I mean, it, humans tend to catch them very easily because humans go at night mm -hmm. and look for these like lit up, very light colored things in the tree and that's where they are. So I don't know if anybody would be upset to see a cricket be eaten, but you can look away. Um, why don't you come over here? And this young lady on your hand is, the reason I brought her, I have a few other ones, but she is always hungry. 
<laughs> he will always eat. It does not matter what time of day, how much she's eaten, even if this guy is holding her and she doesn't even know you. So I'm guessing that she will want to eat this cricket. And you'll tell her, what will happen is, her. there she goes. Do you see how she's ready to <laughs> shoot her tongue out? So their eyes are never looking together except when they're about to shoot their tongue. So have a good look at what happens here. Here comes her tongue. That was so fast. It was very fast. It's, they, they've timed it, and the speed is 8,000 feet per second. So in other words, if her tongue was out for a full second, it would have gone 8,000 feet, which is really far away. So it's like super, super fast. It's like you can barely measure. So that's like a millisecond? Yeah, it's a real millisecond. Do they kill it in their mouth or does it die in their tummy? Or? So they, you know, we were talking earlier about like personalities. They have really different personalities even around how they eat. Some, this is not usually how she eats. Usually um, she will chop it up, she will um, chomp on it really quickly and be done with it. But some do more what she's doing now, which is they just keep it in their mouth for like a minute or two. Um, they don't really, they're not really uh, trying to kill it by chewing it. They're really just sort of immobilizing it and then it goes in their stomach and it kind of gets dissolved with stomach acid. Mm -hmm. Now it's funny, so she, she's probably a little nervous and that's why she's not chewing, but you'll see if I give her another chance, she will, oh well, there she goes. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see how quickly she is going to be done with that one as soon as she realizes that there's another one. So let's see, this is about a foot, right? Let's see if she'll go about a foot. <laughs> Whoa, that was neat. <laughs> That's cool. That is totally cool. Does the tongue like whip your hand? Wait, say that again? Is this. Can you feel the tongue on your hand ever um, when you feed like? Yeah. Do you want to feel what the tongue feels like? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> it's, it was, that one I barely felt because it was so far that you know it just barely got onto it. Then she pulled it back. So but, it's a super sticky tongue then. Yeah. So the tongue is um, has an end that's sticky, and that's and that's how it works. It sticks to the. It sticks to it. Um, do you think pants would eat? Can you see him? Um, we'll see if he wants to eat. Oh, actually, he, he is very particular. He tends not to like crickets, huh. which is kind of interesting. So I was going to bring, well, let's see if he will. Yeah, and he likes worms. He likes worms more, or like, uh, like super worms, not like earthworms. But a lot of chameleons, these ones are pretty easy going, but a lot of chameleons will not eat at all if, if someone's watching them, especially this many people. Oh, his, he's turning a really, his front legs are turning a really nice reddish orange, which is unusual. Yeah, that's a gorgeous uh, color right now. So, yeah. <laughs> so you can see if he doesn't want to let go of something, his, his tail will really secure him there. Do you see this? We can inch away from it. He just is never that fond of crickets. He'll eat them if he needs to. Can you do it? Yeah, I think it's less likely. He has a very uh, large, strong, fast tongue, which is kind of neat to see. Um, actually, we might get a few the baby if there's a real small one here. How are you doing with that one? Are you doing all right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to let someone else hold her? Mm -hmm. Do you want to transfer her? <laughs> Just a yawn. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to tell. Pants is going into bookcase. Oh, oh. 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 
This one is just very mellow to you, right? Sort of like Does anybody else want to hold? Can I bring I'm sorry. Just be careful that it um, doesn't sort of fall off. He's going to be less secure in terms of <laughs> holding on. God, this one's not going to be just powerful. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank if someone would like to hold hands, that's fine. Do you want to hold hands? <laughs> is he full grown then, or is he going to... Pretty much, yeah. He looks pretty big. So see how he's immediately got his tail ready to... Ready for any kind of... Falling or... Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, definitely. It's not like lizards where it falls off? No, no, they don't lose their tails. They don't think they could grow them back. I try to give him like something to hold his tail and I'm holding him so he feels a little more secure. I think that was our, our range of time, so um, I'm happy to answer any last questions or if someone wants to stay around and get a chance to hold. Uh, yeah, you can still do that. And if you still want to. 